The Segway Go-Kart Pro 2 features a new and amazing feature that allows the entire go-kart to double as a racing simulation rig. This is a great option for those looking for a realistic and immersive sim racing experience on top of owning the best electric go-kart in the market today. In this video, we are focusing on answering all your questions on the gaming and simulation experience of the Segway Go-Kart Pro 2. Let's get started. The Go-Kart Pro 2 is equipped with a self-centering steering wheel, meaning if you let go of the wheel while turning, it will spin back to the center by itself. This setup provides a good level of resistance while making turns in game, which adds a whole new level of immersion as every turn feels real. However, the steering resistance is made up of a simple spring system instead of servo motors found on more expensive racing sim wheels. The spring system has a downside, and that is the resistance is extremely disproportionate. The first 5 degrees of turning do not have much if any resistance at all. You can't rely on the springs to reset the steering wheel when you are making small fine-tune adjustments. You should also be ready to fight the wheel, making wide and sharp turns as the full strength of springs now kick in during wider turns. If you're expecting the Go-Kart Pro 2 to have a professional level resistance in the steering wheel, you might be disappointed. But for casual players who just want a good balanced taste into the world of racing simulation rigs, then it's completely okay. Even better than okay in my book. It took me only 10 minutes to adjust to the steering wheel behavior. After all, this is a real Go-Kart. It needs a spring system when it's really zipping outside. I'd say that's a pretty fair compromise. The steering wheel itself is well made with dense and grippy material that feels heavy and weighty, but it's noticeably smaller than a real car's steering wheel. And as a result, that might be a turnoff for some people who might want their steering wheels to simulate the real wheel, which is much bigger. However, to me, this didn't really matter as I was able to acclimate to the go-kart steering wheel size in a race or two. But I do wish the steering wheel size is just a bit bigger, as sometimes it does feel small, especially when playing more fast paced racing games. The Go-Kart Pro 2 delivers strong vibrations to simulate crashes, contacts, and even out-of-bounds gravel extremely well. This vibration is all coming and generated from the Segway S-Max. I can feel the gravel every time I accidentally drive out of the track or bumped into another car. It really completes the immersive aspect of the game and makes the driver feel as if they are really there on the track. This is especially true for games like Mario Kart or any other combat racing games where you feel the nitro boosts, the drifts, and of course, the bombs in the game. However, vibration integration is a hit or miss with most of the racing games. Some are more optimized and some don't use vibrations at all. Overall, it's an amazing experience that really hones in on the immersive aspect of the game. These big metal pedals are the real deal. They are extremely well crafted and feel premium in quality. These are pressure sensitive and feels extremely good to step on. They provide an okay amount of resistance to allow the driver to fine tune acceleration and braking when needed. But often I find myself flooring the accelerator and the brake pedals in tense situations as it might still be a little too easy to accidentally floor the pedals. Overall, the pressure sensitive and well crafted metal pedals are some of the most crucial components of any racing rig. While I wouldn't say these are the best pedals I've ever felt, I would definitely agree that these would get the job done with precision. Also, there are no clutch pedals if you want to simulate gear shifting. However, there are these back pedals you can use with your hands. The game kit is a snap-on USB-C charged unit that lives on the steering wheel. It connects to both your gaming computer and go-kart. When not in game mode, you can use the game kit to change real speed modes. It's mostly very good for all the modern games that's designed by default to use a controller, but I still find myself stuck in game situations that require the use of an analog stick. For example, the game requires me to use the analog stick to find the next race on the map. In this case, the controller will not work and the 
D-pad isn't mapped to control the cursor, so just be prepared and keep a real gaming controller next to you or keyboard and mouse within arm's reach in case you really are stuck, which happens quite often. You don't want to get in and out of the go-kart too much, considering it's so low to the ground, making getting in and out difficult. There is really a sense of excitement as you walk up to the Go-Kart Pro 2 to play your next racing game. It's not just a simple frame, it's literally a stylish and aggressive looking race car that you can not only admire from the driver's seat but also externally from every angle. It really adds that level of immersion and excitement regardless if you're in the driver's seat or not. The frame is adjustable. Dimensions wise, it's exactly the same as previous Segway Go-Kart models. I am 5 feet 9 inches and 200 pounds and I feel slightly crammed in the cart, especially when getting into and out of the vehicle. Also, I wished there was more leg room as my legs are folding a bit more than I'd like. But surprisingly, after an hour of gaming, I still feel comfortable in the seat with no obvious discomfort or pain. If you are someone who needs a specific seating position, any kind of lumbar support, or need to adjust the seat for whatever reason, then you might be out of luck as the seat is not adjustable, just the leg room is, and it's not generous in that department either. Personally, I think if you are more than six feet tall, you are not going to be comfortable sitting in the go-kart for a prolonged period of time gaming. While I mentioned quite a few flaws on the Go-Kart Pro 2 as the racing simulation rig, I want to specifically highlight that this is a fully functional working Go-Kart that races and drifts outside your home when you are done gaming with it. This is something that no racing sims can do. It's actually pretty impressive considering this is one of the highest quality electric Go-Karts on the market today. I had an issue connecting the game kit to Go-Kart, so I called their customer support number and someone picked up right away, recorded my issues, and emailed me back with solutions the very next day. Segway is a big company, and from what I've experienced, their customer support is pretty good. The Segway Go-Kart Pro 2's ability to simulate an immersive racing environment has really awoken something inside of me. Now, I want to build my own racing simulation rig. This is coming from someone who's never really liked racing games. I've always played MOBA and Battle Royale style games. but. Being able to sit in the cockpit and use a real steering wheel with pedals really blew my mind on just how much fun racing sims can be. Those people who spent hundreds, if not thousands, on their racing gaming setups, I totally understand now. It's amazing. I can't stop thinking about the races and just want to get back into the go-kart and do more racing. When you are done playing, because this go-kart takes up quite a bit of space, you can get a vertical stand and store your go-kart while saving storage space. Pretty neat. This go-kart weighs 105 pounds. I carried the whole thing all at once to my basement downstairs, and it nearly killed me as I completely used up all my energy for the day. I also realized that I was dumb because you can separate the go-kart frame and the 9bot S-Max. The S-Max weighs 50 pounds by itself, and that's about half of the entire weigh of the go-kart. Carrying 50 pounds at a time is much more manageable than trying to carry a whole 105 pound go-kart up or down the stairs. You can essentially half the weight in two trips. This is especially good for people living in apartments or wanting to play the go-kart in the basement of the house. Lastly, you'll probably want to wipe down the entire go-kart before you bring it inside, considering how much dust and dirt would be on it after a few rides outside. In Utah, we have a lot salt dust on the road, so we definitely don't want to bring any of that stuff inside the house. To me, the biggest con is you need a good gaming PC next to a large TV and enough space to accommodate a go-kart. Not many people have a full-blown gaming PC near their TVs, which are usually in the living room. Just logistics to think about before you make a purchase. The second biggest con is compatibility with consoles. Most people have PlayStations and Xbox in their living room. Not partnering with at least one of them is a big missed opportunity in my book. Lastly, because these are PC games, not every game is compatible. Some games will need an analog stick.
To enter the game mode, you need to use the included go-kart stand to prop up the front of the vehicle. This allows the front wheels to lift off the ground so you can actually turn the steering wheel without resistance from the ground. Then, insert the included Segway USB dongle into the gaming PC that you'll be playing on. And sorry console friends, it only works on PCs. Next, turn on the go-kart with a single click and turn on the game kit by pressing down on the red button in the center. This will connect the game kit to the go-kart. If they do not connect, hold down the left and right back triggers as well as the down and A buttons for 3 seconds for the game kit to manually connect to the go-kart. Once the game kit is connected to the go-kart, the game kit should automatically connect with the PC via USB dongle. You can confirm the game kit and PC connection from the RGB glow coming from the USB device. You can also confirm the game kit to the go-kart connection by a steady Bluetooth icon and a game icon on the game kit. Warning, absolutely be sure it says game mode on your game kit steering wheel. Otherwise, you might accelerate into your TV. I always slightly tap the accelerator to double check. Better safe than sorry. All controllers have latency. The longer the latency, the worse it is to play real-time competitive games that require precision and quick responses. The good thing about the game kit is that it feels extremely responsive and I never felt disconnected from what's being displayed on the TV. If you are playing on the TV, make sure you turn on gaming mode as that will help with the input lag as well. Overall, the latency and input lag is minimal. And for a casual racer like me, I don't notice any lag whatsoever. The Go-Kart Pro 2 has RGB LED on the bottom, front, and rear of the vehicle. It's a nice touch, but most of the time, it won't matter. If you are sitting in the Go-Kart, you'll never see any of the lights. If you drive the Go-Kart outside under the sun, you'll never see any of the LEDs either. The only time it's clearly visible is at night, but I don't think I will drive this Go-Kart at night considering how low this Go-Kart is. I'm just super concerned distracted drivers will run me over in my own neighborhood. Overall, it's really versatile with all the colors and modes to choose from such as breathing, blinking, and constant. The go-kart also has two rear lights, which are white. I do wish this go-kart comes with more visible lights so I can feel safer while playing with this in the neighborhood. For now, I'll be using the lights on my helmet to be better seen. This is it for my game kit review of the Segway Go-Kart Pro 2. However, Go-Karts are not the only exciting products I review. Check out these amazing high-performance skateboards reviews. Every single one of them is as thrilling, if not more, than the Go-Kart Pro 2. And if you want to see my review of the actual outdoors performance of the Go-Kart Pro 2, be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell for more content. See you on the next one.